to see you. So let's start our little talk. Um, my name is Laura Cekoratova. I am the artistic director of Salon de Virtuosi. Uh, I am located in New York in my living room at the moment. And I'm speaking with um, Remy Genier, who is in his study, in his music room uh, in Paris, correct? Yes. Yes. Yes, so we're very excited and thrilled to have this opportunity to present uh, Remy to our Salon de Virtuosi audience in New York. Um, we will be uh, featuring one of his um, recordings, uh, live recordings, uh, which he did at uh, the Louvre Museum, um, and it will feature the Greek sonata. Um, so first, uh, I want to See how you are. How are you, Remy? How are you doing in this uh, unprecedented circumstances? Yeah, that's quite strange for us artists. We are used to travel a lot everywhere, and at the moment, uh, I am stuck in Paris for more than one month now, I think. Uh -huh. uh, so I cannot really complain. I mean, I'm in Paris and I'm in a very nice apartment. I can practice. There's far worse situation for some people at the moment. So that's something new i would say right right yeah we are fortunate because we always have music um uh, which is endless uh so even if there are no live performances there's always plenty of music to learn and so what music are you playing these days uh what composers are you studying exploring you know the the interesting thing about this time is as you don't have uh, we don't have a lot of concerts uh, Planned because everything has been cancelled until August, uh, minimum, maybe more. Uh, so actually, what uh, we can do is like what I really like to do at the moment: sight reading new new scores, things that I would not have time to do otherwise. Generally, you you have your scheduled um, concerts with all the programs you decided to play, and so you have to practice that a lot. And that's really interesting at the moment. I can I can play some different things. Of course, piano, but I can also recite really like orchestra. So you see, I have a lot of that's oh. mostly of orchestra here. How exciting! Uh, yeah, I really like orchestra. Uh, oh, general. of course. It can be opera also or melodies with singers. Uh, I mean, of course, I don't play with singers because it's not possible to rehearse at the moment. But just sight reading to discover, discover some new new music. That's yeah, really interesting. And and I understand you are also interested in conducting, right? Um, I've done a little bit of conducting, mostly before the competition happens, uh, before Queen Elizabeth competition. Uh -huh. uh, just after, uh, I could not do both at the same time. Conducting is is really difficult because you have an orchestra in front of you. And you can change the schedule as you want, of course. Uh, yeah. When you have a conducting lesson and uh, the teacher will say you for this week, we have one week with full rehearsal every day, maybe three hours morning, three hours uh, afternoon, you have to be there. You can, yeah. It's not like a teacher with my piano teacher. I tell her, oh, could, we, could I come this Sunday? No, I cannot. Oh, the next Sunday, yes, we can always find a time. Find a time to meet. Yeah. Is, is, yeah, orchestra is not that flexible. Yeah, and, yeah. And so when I, I started to have a lot of concerts everywhere, just after Queen Elizabeth competition, I could not afford any more. Yeah. I yeah. Hope so I will start again, maybe at a point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people also uh, conduct from the piano, of course, uh, especially classical concertos or Baroque. You know, the tradition was the pianist to also act as a conductor. So I definitely think that's a great ability that uh, you have to also conduct. <laughs> Actually, uh, if there was, I was not stuck at home, uh, I would have done my first concert without a uh, conductor in uh -huh. Russia. Uh, just now, actually, just oh. now. It's a bit, bit of an uh, Rostropovich festival in, in Moscow, and I should have played bit of an uh, Emperor concerto without conductor. Uh -huh. It doesn't happen. Oh, I'm sure it will happen in the near future, and I'm sure there are great, great opportunities ahead of us all. Um, we just have to, you know, stick with this and make the best of it, as I'm sure you're doing. Um, well, so let's talk a little bit about the Queen Elizabeth competition. Uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, 
the biggest, most prestigious competitions. Uh, you have other competitions on your, under your belt. Of course, you are winner also of the Beethoven competition in Bonn. Um, and um, I was just curious, um, how did you feel entering this competition? Were you there uh, to win it or were you there just to try to see what's around? To, to, uh, were you, what were your expectations uh, starting out? Um. I don't like so much competition. Uh -huh. So when I prepare for one, that's to win because there's no reason otherwise uh -huh. to do it. I mean, when I say I don't like, it's good. You meet very interesting people. There's a lot of things. But by itself, I don't think music needs competition. You have some other things to aim than competition. Uh, so, so really, I think when you want to go, that's why what I, I talk to a lot of young pianists at the moment, because especially, um, I mean, around, around me, I see a lot of young pianists doing a lot of competition, but not preparing them. So maybe they will pass first round, second round, and when semi-final, they, they go out and they say, oh, it's not a problem. It's a nice experience. Yes, but why? I mean, it's not very good for you because you didn't prepare well and that's not a good thing to get used to not be pre prepared. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. also not a good thing because uh, classical uh, world is quite small and people will know you. And if they see you at its competition failing on the second round, it's not good for you. Uh -huh. uh, so I would advise don't do so much competition, but when you do it, prepare it well know which competition you want, why this one is better for you. Maybe if you're fantastic at bar or Beethoven, do bar or Beethoven competition and not Tchaikovsky. If you're not confident in Russian repertory, don't go to Tchaikovsky because everyone told you that Tchaikovsky is the place to be. No, it's not the place to be if you don't like Russian composers. Right. That depends right. of what you want to do, what you are good at. Uh, so I, I really would advise, and that's what I try to do, go on the competition, I will feel confident and strong, uh, and just prepare it quite long, so meaning each competition I've done, I prepare like one year and a half, I would say. One year and a half, that's, yes. that's the, the amount. Let's say like uh, one competition, I do one, then after I have six months when I choose some new pieces to learn and see a little bit what I can do. But I'm already thinking about the next competition. At the six months at the end, I know which competition I'm doing and which pieces I will do. On this right. competition. And then I have six months to learn really every program, everything in the program, and then six months to just play it everywhere for this to be really strong. Yeah, so you can get the experience of performing it yes. as much as that's possible. And that's one of the things uh, that, uh, especially pianists, uh, because we have such a huge uh, repertoire physically, mentally. Uh, so trying it out uh, for different, uh, before the competition is, is one great, uh, gr great way to prepare. Uh, and so for, for the Queen Elizabeth, um, what kind of repertoire? Um, is there an interesting round when you include some new piece that they just send you uh, at the end? This used to be years ago, yes? That's yes, the yeah, tradition. Yeah. Uh -huh. So how did you find yeah. that experience? Are you, uh, were you experienced learning um, new music quickly? And uh... um, In France, we have quite a good school at it. Mm -hmm. What I would say is kind of a curse before, meaning I see a lot of French pianists just learning new repertory, doing competition, that's fail. Learning some new repertory, doing another competition, that's not better, and so on. But the good thing about it, we are quite talented at learning very fast new pieces. There's all the schools of what we call, um, yes, that's sight reading, accompagnement. So, so we, we, we sight read, um, piano score, but we sight also read, uh, sight read quartet and screen quartet, uh, orchestra. Obviously, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's difficult and that's how yes. to I, I was one of the first, I, I mean, after like three or four days learning this uh, quite, quite hard piece, a contemporary concerto, I almost knew it uh, by head. 
Yeah. So you were given just uh, to be uh, to, to explain to our audience, you were given the score at the competition, not in advance. Okay. So so yeah. that, that's there's two things on semi final. You have uh, contemporary piece which is written in advance and you will get the score one month before. Right. That's really common in every competition or almost, almost they try to promote contemporary music. So you will have a round with the contemporary piece and typically you will get the score one month before, maybe two months before. What right. is really specific for Queen Elizabeth competition is the final one where you enter Queen Elizabeth Chapel, which is actually a music school, that's a state music school. And you have one week at the entrance, day one of the week, you are given the score of the concerto and your concerto written for this, that nobody knows, just jury and uh, staff and the composer, of course. Yeah. Are given the score, you have one week to learn it by yourself, no help at all from anyone. Only the, all the, all the, uh, uh, f finalists are there and, and how can, can the practice score. together. So, so it's it's really interesting because we can share our experience. That's the uh -huh. most interesting thing, actually. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be totally different if we were just alone, like uh, now, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you have one week to learn this concerto, and after this week, you are in final with your concerto, your sonata you choose, like Beethoven, Haydn sonata, what you want, and the contemporary concerto you learn in one week. Yeah. Yeah, I always found this fantastic because it really tests you, uh, your ability to learn quickly and to learn, work on new music, which is important in the 21st century. Uh, so I'm really impressed uh, by, by you and, and all these wonderful pianists uh, who do so well at the Queen Elizabeth competition. Um, and who was the, the composer the of the concert? The really interesting thing is people don't realize it's the part working together with all finalists, which is uh -huh. really interesting. Yeah. Because in any other competition in final, we just are looking at us like, oh, that's my enemy. And uh -huh. uh, <laughs> little yeah. bit, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't practice together, you kind of practice against each other. Uh -huh. And here you are forced to practice together, and that's very good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you become buddies in learning the work. And do you have access to the composer if you have a question about certain technique? Or... Uh, we have, uh, like, he came to our free time, yes. Yeah. He came, you know, it's quite a, uh, it, it's a real place uh, in the forest, so you don't access that easily. So he came, like, two or three times. Uh-huh. Who was uh, he? What's, what's the name of the composer? Michel, Michel Petrosian. He's uh -huh. French-Armenian. Uh-huh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, is there a recording uh, we can we can share for uh, of, of your performance? I think there's a recording online. I think mine is somewhere. Otherwise, you for sure have the recording of the first piece and Bruce Gilbert somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I played it again after with uh, Armenian State State uh, Symphony Orchestra Fantastic. in Yerevan. Yeah. Um, and. There was some TV recording, but I'm not sure it's uh, it's still here. Yeah, well, check it out. And, de uh, def definitely, there's some recording somewhere. Yeah, so Maybe now you've, mine. you've spiked my curiosity. So definitely check it out for myself and also share it with some of friends. Um, how about the other composers? You have recorded two CDs so far, uh, as far as I know. Uh, one Bach CD and one Beethoven CD. Um, can we talk about those a little bit? Um, how did they come come about? Sure. So, just after Queen Elizabeth, I was invited in a quite famous French festival, La, La Folle Journée, directed uh -huh. by René Martin, which oui. is a really great uh, French uh, director of French festivals, La, 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 La Roque d'Enterron, uh, La Folle Journée. And he told me, I, I want to, to make a recording with you. So, okay, yes, sure. And I say, okay, what what can, can we do? And I say, well, we could do bar because uh, in Queen Elizabeth people really liked my bar. I think I have something to say about it. My teacher really loved this idea and has something also to to say for my interpretation in bar. Mm -hmm. uh, and so let's do it. Uh, and so we've done this uh, first bar city. 
and for the second choice, then Beethoven, it was quite obvious because the same, I mean, I, I really like Beethoven and uh, I was doing Beethoven competition. I already have quite a lot of sonata I could choose from. And so for both of this recording, instead of um, choosing very narrow period of the composer, like taking one opus, and uh, I, I wanted for first recordings to be more wide. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's quite typical from my bar study, which uh, you start with, uh, we include um, Capriccio on his depart the departure of his brother. Uh, he was he was 20 when he was this, this piece. Uh, it was the age I, I was when I recorded it, actually. Fantastic, uh, wow. Uh, and Partita and Toccata is much further in his career as composer. He was probably 40, 50 or even more, I, I don't remember. Yeah. And same for Beethoven, I took second sonata and Opus 100 Pet, so just yeah. before last sonata. So I like the idea for first recording to have kind of a very wide panel of style and see how a composer go from his youth to older age and more mature works. Yes. Yeah, and especially with Beethoven, that's that's amazing, the transformation he went with. He was revolutionary from the start, and then he kept evolving and changing, and each piece is really like a new world that he opened up at the time, and, and it's so relevant today as well. Um, I sometimes find that other composers like Brahms, uh, for example, even in the early works, they're already showing a lot of the things that they do later in life. Um, uh, for That's example, true. even even the early uh, ballads, Opus 10, uh, already have the flavor of his very late works, uh, the short uh, intermezzi and, and so on. Um, and his sonatas have the flavor of some of his symphonies. Uh, but it seems... I, I would say this composer definitely explores a new world. Yeah. And so you can quite dramatically see how far they go from one place to the other. And yeah. Beethoven is probably the most typical example. Yeah. Uh, you could think about Wagner also, which start from uh, operas that are quite standard, let's say, and went to yeah. something totally different. Yeah. And typically, Brahms is not this kind of composer. He has already his work from Schumann, let's say, Schumann and composer Ron Schumann. Yeah. And so he was exploring that further, but he already has a Want to start, which is, was quite far already, because all yeah. this world was already built by some composer before him. Yes, yeah. Um, what other composers? We're going to hear you play Greek, uh, which is really fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience uh, playing at the Louvre and uh, performing this particular Greek sonata? How did that come uh, about? Uh, that's. Actually, I didn't play so much. You know, I think I played it once or maybe twice at Sonata. Uh, the first time I was asked to do some great program. I uh -huh. So I played this and some very not well known pieces. But you know, Greg made so, so many small pieces. We all know um, uh, ly ly lyrical piece, I think it's in English. Yes, lyric, lyrical lyric piece. sweet uh, with the love. Yes, all, all that piece. we know very well, but there's a lot of other small pieces which are completely fantastic. So instead of just taking the main, mainstream piece, I, I, I found some other not so famous pieces, uh, quite close to Schumann, by the way. And uh, so I did this program once, and then I played this sonata again for Louvre, and that's all. I, play, I never played it again. Uh huh. Uh, I really like Greg. Um, yes, he's. I have to say. There's a way it's kind of comfortable to play and to feel yeah. well to play it. Yeah, so you have... Sometimes it's a... good. Yeah. <laughs> when you are playing all the time Shostakovich and Rachmaninoff and Beethoven, that's composed that are fantastic, but like to, to make the interpret not feel comfortable. Yeah, it's like a, like a big workout and... <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone knows the Greek concerto, of course, uh, but but in a lot of ways, uh, discovering his other works uh, is uh, 
really a great experience. And also his connection to the folklore and to singing, uh, fairy tales and this whole world. I find it very comforting, especially now uh, where every, everyone, when everyone is reading a lot and um, exploring new music. So I'm looking forward to sharing your recording with our audience. Um, it was lovely to talk to you. Um, before our, we let you go, um, I wanted to wish you all the best. Uh, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about your uh, interests outside of the music world. Um, are okay. you interested in sports or, or what do you do for fun? Uh, not now, but in general. Well, yeah, now I'm a little bit stuck in my apartment. So of course I can uh, read a lot and uh, watch some movies. I really like movies in general. And, and uh -huh. really. Otherwise, I would really like to go outside, which is not possible at the moment, but I, I really like uh, sports and especially sailing. Sailing, sailing and hiking in mountains. Uh -huh. Where do you go sailing usually? Uh, in Brittany. French Brittany is quite uh -huh. a the best place for, to do that in France. We have a lot uh -huh. of uh, a small island and so it's, quite, it's quite difficult, quite tricky, so very interesting. Yes. So, do you do you know how to sail your own boat? And you, yes, you yes, went to yes. school. Wow, fantastic! I, I understand there are lots of terms that you have to learn, and lots of different knots. And yeah, uh, especially I, I think in English it's the same, but in French, uh, the most famous sailor and old sailor are from Brit Brittany, and so we have a lot of world who come from uh, not not so French but Brit Brittany uh, dialect. Uh -huh. uh, and so there's a lot of weird, um, weird words. And I mean, for me, it's normal now. But if you, if I have to explain that to someone who doesn't know, I can. Pretty sure I can do a sentence. He doesn't understand one word. It's simple things, but instead of saying notes and uh, uh, a line and 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 a, a part of the boat or right left, you don't use right left because if you're in, in front of me. Right and left is not the same for you, so you, this, uh, you, you use starboard and, yeah. and this, you know, you know, in English. So you have to get used to it at first, but it, it goes fast, I think. Ah. It's like music. And how big are the, bo the boats that you sell? Are they, are they small boats or? Everything. Uh, one very Have you done a big stairs. boat? Yeah. The most biggest one, uh, it was uh, like a um, tall ship. Uh, so two, two masts, you know, the like uh, 19th century uh, two, two masts and it was very interesting yeah. because I was climbing on the mast and so you can be like 50 meters um, above the ocean and just see only the ocean around you and maybe see some whales or dolphins. Uh, oh, that's how quite fantastic. Do. Yes. Well, let's message. hope that before long you can you can take a bunch of friends on the boat and <laughs> and sail around. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we are very much looking forward to hearing your recording of the Greek. Um, it was a wonderful conversation. Thank you for uh, connecting Thank you very much. here. My pleasure. And hopefully next year, as soon as we are able to, uh, we can have you live in New York and uh, we can talk more about music and sailing and uh, share some of your gifts with um, our Salon de Virtuosi community. I hope so. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Remy. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy and keep reading those scores. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.